Hello, today we're going to discuss netting. I did a tutorial that wasn't a video and it was very hard to explain. <laughs> so I'm hoping that this little video tutorial will make it easier. At the moment I'm kind of at a weird angle around the camera. You'll have this in your lap. But what you need is a shuttle. You can also use a crochet hook and you'll see how later on. I'm using a shuttle though for ease. It's a lot easier to use it. But this is my great grandmother's shuttle and I don't know where you can get them now. I'll put that so you can see it. It has a silver dowel down the middle and then on either end these little things to keep it in. There we go, now it's in focus. And you wrap your string around it. It's helpful. Then you need something called a mesh stick. As you can see it's just basically a glorified popsicle stick. It's a certain width and scissors and a pillow and one little safety pin to hold it down. Unlike knitting and crochet, you hold it down on a pillow and this is what's going to give you your tension. So, I've done some string through my mesh stick and I'm going to wind up a little bit more on it because I'm trying to keep it within the camera. I'm taking kind of a while. <laughs> but it really doesn't take that long to wind up your stick. Then you take the scissors and you snip it. The reason we do that is to keep it from tangling up, because unlike uh, knitting and crochet, you don't use something that's already attached to the spool, you have to unattach it to the spool. By the way, this is just normal crochet thread that you use to make like um, lace crochet, and it's a blue, so it, you can see it against my hand and against this pillow right here. It really doesn't matter what color you use, and you can even use really thin lace. And I'd like to learn how to do stockings, I haven't figured that out yet, I know people have asked me about that. But <laughs> the stocking I try to make was kind of a fail. So notice how for this foundation loop, that's what it's called. I do just one simple knot. It's one that you can take out. But this is the string that your initial doily will be placed on. I'll show you an example. Like here's one. This is a doily, by the way. Let me figure out how to do something that's more practical. But this is like what my great grandmother was making. She did it in a circle. And I can see it. And this is the foundation loop on the other side. It wasn't finished, so this knot is still there. You can see she took it out. She got ready to tie a knot, so that way you wouldn't be able to see it. She would have snipped off the end. So when you open it, it's a circle. And that's what the foundation loop is for. If you decide not to do a doily, if you want to do something that's more of a net, then you would take out the foundation loop and it would make a square shape. Let's pull this over here. We can always fit this out later. All right. So now we're back. I've got my foundation loop set up. It's nice and firm. Your pillow will probably not have like this cover on it, <laughs> but you know. So to start out, you take your spool thread, and you just tie a normal knot around the side here, like a half inch. Nothing hardcore. It's going to come out eventually, but just enough so that it actually stays on the knot. And then I'm going to try to angle my body <laughs> around this camera. Hold this under, and I'm going to zoom in for you. On the top of this is that knot. I've got my four fingers underneath and I'm holding it like this. And this is how you want to hold it. Take this under the third finger, then under the first finger. Notice how the knot's kind of moving. I move it under the thumb, and then back around. This is the tricky bit. You want it to go around this fourth finger, through here, up, and then over this string right there. And then as I was going, the first one is always the hardest. That moved. My thumb is supposed to keep it there, but I didn't do a good job of that. So we're going to pull it down. Notice how I'm using all four fingers to pull that down so the knot is on the top. This right here is actually the other end of the string. Ignore the phone ringing in the background. I go through that right there and then I pull it through. Unfortunately, I need to turn this over. Have a little bit more give. 
The other ones are a lot easier. The first few are kind of tricky. And now there is a knot right there. I just edited out the voice machine. It was really annoying. All right, I'm going to do another one. So under this third finger, around here, under my thumb, around there, I want to make sure that I'm going over the string before it. So see that string right there? I'm going over it. And then I go into here. Being careful about the leftover thread from the first half hitch knot that I did into the foundation loop. And that would be your second stitch. This is just plain stitch in netting. And I'm doing it really slow for you, but you can go pretty fast. Notice the order that I'm letting go. So when I go through, I'll do it one by one. I first let go of the thumb. Then I let go of these two in the middle. And I kind of go back and forth between my pinky finger and then this finger right here. And then you let go of all of it, keeping that little knot on the top. You want to try to keep it very precise, and you want to try to keep these all the same length. Now you don't have to use a popsicle stick or a, uh, what is this called, a mesh stick, mostly because you can't buy mesh sticks in most stores. Michael's only does mainstream stuff. Um, you can make one, or you could just use a pencil, or a lot of people use crochet needles, actually, as their mesh sticks. The so different size crochet needles will give different loops. I'm going to show you in a little bit what it's going to look like. I'm just going to do a couple more and I'm going to do them more quickly so you can see how that goes. And for this one, I'm going to go in a circle. Before I taught you how to go just straight down, I'm going to go around in a circle to make that doily look. Take this off. Just take it off. These knots are going to hold really well. So now we're ready to start our next thing. As you can see, my first stitch of the next row is actually really long. <laughs> that happens. I, I didn't do the knot close enough to the edge, and so it just gave out a little bit more. That's fine. Now to do the first one of the next, what I like to do is I like to just go around it, and this will get in the way in the beginning, until about the fourth or fifth row. After that, it'll be a lot easier. You do a stitch like normal. You're going to catch the first loop. You can be worried about twisting, but in this case, I'm really not going to because we're going to pretend this is your very, very first thing. I've learned to do the rotated stitch. You pull until that stitch is on the top. Make sure your other stitches aren't in it. That stitch was extra long, by the way. I, uh, as so you can see, the other stitches end there. That one is twice as long. So that means my knot, my initial knot, gave out. Or that means as I was moving it, I didn't make the knot close enough, so it kind of slipped a little bit. And that happens, and that's fine. Now you can see this little square form right here. That's good. We want a square. So notice how I put that in. So now the knot is on the top. And we just keep going around. It's kind of tricky with this dark thread to see what's coming next. So I'm probably going to jump ahead so you can see the end of the first row. Finished doing that first row, and this is what it makes. These are little knots, and they're not going anywhere. You can kind of slide them along the row, little circle row before it. So you can see it makes this kind of flower shape. It could continue on, but you get the picture. As you keep going around, it'll keep adding to it. It'll look a lot, very geometric when it's done. This looks very rounded because it's at the very edge. Put it against this white, you can see it better. And when that first stitch happened, I thought I did it wrong. I remember saying that to you, but I actually didn't. The foundation loop made it look like it was twice as long. As you can see, it's about the same length as all the other ones. Because the mess stick makes it a lot harder to mess that up. So, if you want to make it a circle, you would tie the knot right here, the foundation loop. And so that's how you do netting. Let me show you again a nicer example. This is my great grandmother's. It's got like thousands of stitches. 
what she does to make a lot of these is that she'll actually braid. You can see these are kind of little braids right here. Or she'll kind of go into it, kind of like a crochet stitch. She'll make little bobbles. She'll do a lot of really cool things. I'm not going over that in this tutorial. This is what you can do with it. And so I'm going to go over more stuff later, but for now, this was the beginning of the normal stitch. I hope it made sense. <laughs> if not, I'll be making more and uh, hopefully in a little bit quicker than I made this video. It took me a couple months to get to this. I had stuff going on.